Afternoon, guys. How are you doing, David? Yeah, not bad. Not bad. Hi, David. Hi, yeah. How are you? You okay? Yeah, yeah. I'm just talking about um, budgets, maybe, and the golf budget for next year in America. One of the players being offered 20 million or 30 million to play in an event. That'll just tie in with what Livingston have got to spend next season, I think, doesn't it? Can you not get us over there? <laughs> the money's incredible, eh? Incredible. Nah, it's going to be difficult next year. It's going to be difficult, especially when we're not, we don't really know what's happening, do we, with fans? Yeah. Tell us about Ayo then and why you decided he was the next Queen of the South player to, to join Livingston. I'd been watching him for a wee while. He came up and he'd done quite well. Actually, I got on quite well with Sandy and Alan. I'd watched him at centre half. Wasn't overly sure, but then Queens went on that pretty decent run. They went on a very, very good run, didn't they? Picked up a lot of wins and uh, unbeaten for a while. Similar to ourselves. And he was playing as a holding mid at times. And um, I'd watched him, I thought, you know what? Good mobility, good mobility, good height, good aggression, good switchy play. I think we've lost a lot of games this year through set plays. When we used to, historically, we were known for being big physical livings, in which I don't think's the case anymore. We've lost too many goals for set plays and we've not scored enough goals from set plays. So I've had to look at how they have become more aggressive in both boxes. How do I defend my goal better and how do I score more goals from set plays for one of a better word, take John Guffrey out of the equation and maybe Jack a couple of times. We've, we've not been as prolific as we have in other seasons. We lost the National Cup final for a set play. Sean Rooney header, never picked him up. We lost 2-0 previously to them with a Sean Rooney header and a set play free kick, albeit it's a free kick. Um, so it's something we've got to have identified that I think we've got to get better at next year. These are fine margins, David, aren't they? Fine margins, especially at this level, Brian, and we're finding out more and more when you're in the top six. It's fine margins. You're playing well, but the better teams don't need as many chances to score goals against you because, for want of a better word, there's probably better quality of player you're playing against, so they need less of a chance. So it's fine margins in football, and this is where, as a manager, you've got to try and identify that. You've been around a lot of games in the Championship recently. Um, you know yourself and Fox have been watching games. I take it that's a market where you think you can exploit in terms of being able to offer players potential of improvement and yeah, also at a high level. You've got, to be, you've got to be careful because you can't have too, too many players coming in for a lower level that are trying to get up to speed with the intensity of the Premier League. So you've got to be careful, but it's definitely a market that I've dipped into previously. Like I think the, year, the first year we Robbie Crawford and then the second year Alan Forrest, Lyndon Dyke. So it's a market that I'm well aware of. Probably more aware of it when I played in the Championship. When we went into the Premier League after the first year, you were more aware of the Championship and the players because you played in it previously. But I think it's a good level. It's a good standard to play there. And especially now with the UK coming out of the EU, you're probably going to have to look at down south more, which is very difficult with our finances. But the Scottish market's probably one we're going to have to pick up players from. It's the days of maybe signing Steve Lawson and stuff like that for foreign markets, foreign shores is, is getting more difficult. So we need to look closer to home. Just looking at this season, Debbie, I mean, you, you've almost won 41% you know, of your matches. You've won this season. Is that overachieving for Livingston? I think we're overachieving being in the top six. I can remember speaking to the boys in the they said to him, I said, we're going to get in the top six, but this is going to be really difficult because it's ultimately it's harder to win games of football. It's ultimately that basically without sugar coating it, it's more difficult to win games of football. And let's be honest, we've got to be bang at it. And you're probably looking for the team you're playing against to be slightly off it. Or our game plan obviously um makes the opponent less <laughs> more vulnerable to us. So You've got to be buying at it. So for me, every year, Livingston finishing 10th is, I would take that every year, but that doesn't mean we're not ambitious. We've got 750 season ticket holders, so 
that probably puts you into perspective. We've not got a big budget. Whatever the position for finishing 12th in the Premier League is, that's my budget every year. And every player's probably got a, they have got a relegation clause in their uh, contracts because we can't afford to pay those wages if we were to get relegated. So we're very frugal in how we run. We run very sustainable. And until we probably start increasing our season ticket numbers, I don't see where that revenue is coming from to increase the budget. I, I got sent a league table. Somebody sent me on LinkedIn. And it was pounds for points. So Livingston's budget is 1.2 million. And I know for a fact we've got the lowest budget in the Premier League. I know that for a fact. 1.2 million pounds, and we've got 44 points. And it roughly works out, it averages out at 28,000 pounds a point. 28,000 pounds a point. I think the closest team to us, this was last week, bear in mind, the closest team to us was Hibs on something like 53,000 pounds a point. Now, we all, would, you, would you reckon, to put it into perspective, would you reckon Celtic's budget is, player budget? I, I've got an idea. It must be... 50 odd. Well, 60. 55 million. 55 million. Divide that by 73 points. £800,000 a point it's cost them. Rangers, I think, are sitting at roughly, roughly half a million pound. So if you want it, for me, that shows you about where you are in the Premier League. That shows you where you are. And it's like Olympic weightlifting. You get, it's on your body weight. It's not how heavy you can lift it pounds per kilograms compared to your body weight. And I think we're very, very similar. So I think the boys can take a lot of credit for that. You've taken on Rangers next Wednesday, Davey. What, what did you say they were? About 500,000, something like that? I've, well, that's me. I'm, I'm guessing, mate. To be honest, Rangers is probably the one club that I don't actually know where their budget sits in. I would estimate it around 35, 40 million pound, something along the lines. Divide that with the points I've got. They've got a big points total, so their budget comes down to roughly around half a million pound a point. Fantastic. Even Hamilton, I've done Hamilton's. Hamilton, I don't know what to speak about all clubs' budgets, but uh, even at that, Hibs were the closest team to us. Hibs were the closest team to us on the points per pound. But, but come the end of the season, that might average itself off a little bit with St. Johnson's and stuff like that. But it, it puts it into perspective. But Rangers, for me, they've got a lot to play for. Uh, obviously, they've got the focus of going through the season unbeaten. And that's, let's be honest, it's the only focus they've got left. They're out in the two cups. They've won the league. It's already done. So I think Stephen will be using using that little statement there that let's get through this season unbeaten is to refocus his players and... They're, they're, they're the league champions for a reason, Brian. They're top, top professionals. Top, top professionals. Thanks, David. Thanks. Is that us? David, I just wondered on Io, would, would you intend to play him? Obviously, you play defensive mid and also in defence. No, he, he's, he, predominantly, he's, I see the, the player as a defensive midfield player. He's got good energy, good range of pass, passing. He's aggressive in the tackle. He's aggressive in the air. So I see the player as a defensive midfield player, but that's not to say he won't, he won't potentially play at right centre half for me. So it depends on the recruitment coming in, it depends who's leaving the club at the end of the season, but predominantly I see Ayo in there as a defensive midfield player. There's been a lot of games this season where we've lost the game of football because we're not defending the box properly from a set play, and it's something I need to, I've identified that we need to do better at. Excuse me. One more question about next season. This season has been incredible in terms of no crowds at all, any games. Yeah. What do you expect to happen come August, come the start of next season? And where do you think we'll be, and Livingston will be in 12 months' time? I'd like to think we're going to be in the Premier League, but from a, from a fan's perspective, I really hope, I think there's a lot of momentum out there for the to turn the fans to the stadium. I think there's a big appetite from the fans, from the public. I just hope we're not direct feeding fans back. Now, listen, safety comes first, we all know that. So, But I just hope we're not direct feeding it back into the fans because I think we're going to lose the momentum of football opening back up. So let's say we can go 20%, then 30, 40, 50. I think we're going to lose a lot of that impetus, Brian, the people coming back to football. 
and then by the time they get back to 100% capacities, everybody's been to a game of football, they've all took in a few games of football, and there's an old saying, it's an old saying in business, but it's an old saying in football, it's a lot harder to bring back the fans that you've lost, so when they, you lose the season ticket holders, it's a lot harder to get them to come back, because a Saturday gets taken up by something else, so I just hope that when we get back, we can get fans back into the stadium and we're not losing to doing something else on a Saturday because then it's, I think it's going to create a massive problem, if I'm honest. Well, the one yeah, the one it goes without fans, do you think there is that danger of people switching off then to football? Yeah, 100%. Definitely. You'll still have your diehards, but I do think, well, well, I think we've probably lost a lot of that just now, if I'm honest. If people are now getting back, they can go out shopping, you can travel all over the country, you can go sightseeing. So there's probably, you've lost a lot of that already because people have been in lockdown for so long. As soon as now they've been allowed geographically to go and travel, I think we've probably lost a lot of that. Because they're doing, they're doing all their stuff as we speak. Thanks, David. Cheers, pal. Much David, can I just check, uh, Scott Tiffany, is that his, obviously he's, he had a good spell with Thistle there, is that his contract now up with Lindsay? Yeah, we've offered, we've offered Scott uh, new terms, to be honest, Scott. Scott will be tied under the compensation ruling. So he's been out and done extremely well, which, which you're looking for in a loan deal. He's been out and ticked all the boxes from a personal point of view for Scott and from a club point of view. He's done extremely well. And so you've offered him new terms, and do you see him coming back in the picture then at Livingston, or with a view to loaning him out again? Now, I, personally, what I think has been a bit of interest in Scott, so what I think is probably going to happen is I'm going to deal with a club and get a transfer fee for Scott. It'll be a nominal fee, but I do I can see Scott moving on. He's done extremely well in League One, with a top League One club that's going into the Championship, that's going to be a big Championship club. So I've had a couple of inquiries. I don't want to stagnate the kids' development, if I'm honest. But if Scott Tiffany's back in the building and in the summer, he's the same as everybody else. He'd be vying for a, a place with Livingston's um, squad. But I think he's done extremely well and I think there's a lot of interest in the player. Right. So what, what would that be? Do you get training compo for him then? Yeah, yeah. Well, we, we get training compo yeah. at the end of the world. That's Scott now being with Livingston for three years in the Premier League. So, there's training compensation due there. And do you think this would be a good fit for him if that's where he wanted to go in the Championship? If that's where Scott wants to go, I think Ian McCall's a, he's been a good fit for Ian McCall and Partick Fizzle. We tiffs for the Paisley area. It's a massive club. Financially, they pay half decent wages, so I think it would be a good fit. But there is other clubs interested in him, so... I think it's always one of the ones going to a manager, you know, going back to an environment, you know, i.e. in Partick Fissel, he's, he, it's been a very, very successful period for Tiff. So I think that would be his favourite club, but that's only me speaking. But I think he's done extremely well there. Just finally for me, David, the, the aspirations of Europe, are you keeping an eye on how Hibs doing the Scottish Cup? Yeah, of course we are. Of course we are. We need to go in first and foremost. Almost Rangers, and secondly, we need to try and get back to fifth against St. Johnson, so it's going to be extremely difficult, but we'll keep one eye on that depending on where we finish at the end of the season. Great, thanks, David. You kind of had a number of options. Why did you choose Livy? Uh, you know, I've come here, you know, the guy, I've meant to meet the guy for, you know, and he's just shown his belief in me. And I've obviously watched Livingston a few times this season, and I've seen that the players have played a good group, um, group, group of players. Good bunch of players and I like the work ethic that they put in training and obviously in games and that's what just, just sold it for me really. And and your other options were they in the Premiership? Yeah, I had a I had a, I had an option in the Premiership. I had an option obviously down south in England. I had other options in abroad, but you know I come up to Scotland to you know take Queens to the highest possible um, position in the league, which we could we could have done, and uh, obviously to get myself a move and that's what I did it did so I'm happy about that. How did you find your time at Queen's? Uh, it was good. It was difficult at the start, you know, because it's a new bunch of players. You know, it's always hard sometimes. It can go either way. It can go really well. It can go bad. Obviously, at the start, we've had a bad start, but we've stuck together, put the hard work in and shown that we could be a good bunch of players, really. You, you must be pleased with your goal return for, for the position that you play. Yeah, um, you know, 
I've scored a fair amount of goals in my career, to be fair. And um, obviously, last this season was my highest goal scoring record. Um, and I just felt like, you know, I just put my all into it and just was dedicated all season, and just fully committed. I just worked my worked my socks off, and the amount of goals I've I've scored is probably just due to the hard work and, and determination that I've put in in training and in the games. Do you hope to replicate that here at Levy? Most definitely, most definitely. I'm, I'm first thing coming through this door is obviously being trained here. You know, it's just seeing the hard work that the gaffer wants to put into the players and and the intensity, and I've just just getting myself to adapt to it and putting my putting my ability on the pitch and showing that I can play at this level. And then as soon as I get, hopefully I get a starting position in the team and then replicate what I did this this season, next season. You never know, like I could just bring so much different, I could bring different things to the team, add more goals to the team, help in defensive positions, you know, make our team a much better team. And either or position, you're happy? Defensive mid or? Uh, yeah, I'm comfortable, I'm comfortable both positions. Um, Obviously, I made, I made my first senior debut when I was 16. I played at centre back, um, but while my time at centre back, I was playing when I was young. I was playing centre mid. I was fluctuating in between the two, so I kind of basically learned two positions while I was growing up in my career. So I'm comfortably in both. You had a you had a few clubs uh, when you were down south. Do you feel kind of almost settled now that you're in Scotland? Unsettled. No, settled. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, no, I'm settled. I'm settled. I was settled from like the first first month, you know, I've just trained my mind, you know, where if I'm gonna go somewhere, I just put my head down and focus now. So now I'm here in Scotland, it might be this what is it, five hundred miles away from home. I just you know, I just put my head down and work and then hopefully the rewards pay, pays off. Okay, thank you. Thank you. I uh, Livingston are a a club where they've always had a very strong bond with the players. Yeah. What have you found like this week being in training with the squad? Although they'll be playing a couple of games next week, you'll yeah. be able to sit and watch them in the stand. Say that, say that last bit again, sorry I couldn't hear. You won't be able to play next week, yeah, but you'll yeah. sit and watch them in the stand. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's the bond is... Oh yeah, like the boys, the boys in training, they, they've welcomed me in like, like I've been here for like the last year, you know, like, I can't, I can't say a bad thing about the place. I don't even like coming as a new boy coming from Queens. They will be looking at me thinking, ah, just a big lad. I don't know, but they've welcomed me. They've made me feel like I'm like it's home already. So I ain't got a bad thing to say about the place. The boys are brilliant. The, the gap is brilliant. The, the facility here is, is, is I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy with it. I'm more than grateful for it. And I'm just here to just graft my socks off. Hopefully, get in the starting lineup and, and show everybody like yourselves and the fans. And obviously the coaches that, that brought me here, that I'm, I'm ready for this league. The Scottish air appears to you. It looks like you like it because you, your career has kept on. Yeah. Young team of the South. Yeah, what yeah. Is it about Scottish football that's different from some of the football that you've been playing in down south. Uh, um, I feel like Scottish, Scottish football is is, is is it's a bit similar. It's a bit different. The fans are the, the fans are more like they they love their clubs a bit more, etc. But um. Um, I just felt like me coming to Scotland. I just felt like I just needed a change, take my take myself take myself out of the comfort zone, and and just give it give it a go. Really, like before previously, I've been down in London. I'm at home. Maybe I was too maybe I was comfortable or, or whatever. I didn't know what the situation was with myself. So he thought I just thought you know what this year I'm just going to take my way, take myself out of the comfort zone, just put the hard work in and the graft in, and then see what happens. And obviously now I'm here. And I'm to be fair, I've only been here what since. September last year, what eight, six, um, seven, eight months. I'm enjoying it. it. Feels like I've been here for ages, but I enjoy it. Scotland. It might be cold, you know, but <laughs> I mean, I'm enjoying it. I can't lie. How did the move to Queen of the South come about? Because Ebb's fleet to <laughs> doesn't seem a natural route. Yeah, um, you know, I just I got in contact with one of my, my agent now, and I basically I, t I told him, look, I want to come up to Scotland. Like I want to take myself out of the comfort zone, as I said before, and I want to prove myself in Scotland. Hopefully, I can get into the Premiership, and then basically that's how that's how I got in. I just got hopefully got got in myself into Queens, proved my got myself a contract, and then just grafted all season, grafted it to get into the team, played every played every minute, started every game, scored nine goals, and I'm here now. Has there anything surprised you about being up here? Anything surprised me about being in Scotland? Yeah. Um. To be fair, I, I, really, I like Scottish people, they're quite funny. They're quite funny. I like Scottish people, they're quite funny. They're very welcoming as well. Very welcoming. Like, um, 
Other than that, I like it. I really, I really do like it. I really do like it. They're very welcoming. The, the lyrics, they make me laugh. I love the accent. It's just cold, but we do with that. But other than that, it's, it's great. Man. It's great. Yeah, wish you well. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Was that always your kind of intention when you made the move up north? That you said, right, okay, hopefully in quick time I can get a crack at playing with a Premiership club. Uh, my, my my intention was to obviously come up to Scotland. I, I knew my ability. I thought I could play in the Prem, but obviously it's different coming from National League in the, coming to the Scottish Prem. We're thinking National League is not quite the level, same level, you know what I mean? So you've got to prove yourself and then maybe the league below, maybe the league below that, League One or something. But hopefully, luckily, I got myself a championship club. So playing every game, I just thought I'll put my hard work in and graft. Hopefully someone in the Premiership would be able to see me and know that I've, I've got the ability to play in the Prem and obviously get the move. So obviously now, obviously now I've made the move into Livingston. I want to show obviously that I can play in the Prem because I still need to prove myself I can play in the Prem. So I need to obviously do that, prove myself I can play in the Prem and, and hopefully flourish. So Has the move come sooner than you might have thought, like joining a Premiership club? Mm, um, uh, I wouldn't say necess not necessarily. I feel like Sometimes, I've not particularly myself, some players maybe come from National League and then move straight to the Prem, like um, a player, I can't remember his name, went to Motherwell, and now he's at Ross County, I can't remember his name, from National League, who I played against, which came straight to the Scottish Prem. Maybe people's, people's journeys are different, you know. I, I, don't, I don't look into compare myself to others, I just know that this is my road, I've got to take my road as it comes, and then just keep working on. Good man, well, we wish you all the best. Thank you very much, Sean. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers.